315 Jamesburg a mailing address and I want to wish um, Mr. Kuhn, Farmer Kuhn, a uh, happy 91st yesterday. Oh, yes. Who lives in his home by himself since he lost his wife last year. And uh, we would like to reminisce with uh, John and Frank about the earliest remember, early and best remember, I can't get it straight, but yeah, <laughs> memories of South Brundley and living on a farm and how things have changed. So we'll start with you, John, and just bring us back as far as you can remember and why your mom and dad came here and when, if you can remember that. Well, all I can tell you, I can rem remember when I was five years old. I, uh, my father was plowing down the garden. And I ran down and I said, Pop, I'm five years old today. That's the most I can, I can't remember but mm -hmm. before that. And how many acres did you farm then? Was, the farm was 84 acres, with 12 acres of woods, there's 72 acres of farm around here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, ne the ne next time I, re next thing I remember was when Woodrow Wilson become, was elected president. I remember that. Was that good for the farmers? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> Kid, I, I couldn't tell you that. I don't know whether it was good or whether it was bad. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he was president when, when World War I started. 1914. Yeah, but he, he was elected in 19... He was elected in 1960. Mm -hmm. And they all kept hollering, Woodrow Wilson kept us out of war. As soon as he was elected the second time, we were into him. We got into him. Now, how did your mom and dad come, how did they decide to locate here? Were they from around here, or? That I, could, I, that I, I couldn't tell you that. I, I don't remember how. Well, well did, they, didn't, didn't they, they, come, they, they came here, oh. and they bought, the, your father bought this farm, but Pearson still owned the other farm, though, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so but when, when they, they first farmed, they farmed up near Forsgate. It was a Beeler farm, which Forsgate owned later. And then, then they moved over on, on the, which is uh, Davidson's Mill Road today. It was Fresh Ponds Road. Then they had moved over there on the farm. They have been working on shares. And then in 1906, my father bought this farm here. And we, we moved here. And this right here, from, that's the year I was born, 1906. Mm -hmm. So, uh, taxes are $27 on this farm. Yeah, I find an old tax bill twice. <laughs> Now I paid out a day. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, uh, and then the father put a big apple and peach orchard down there. And people said, oh, he, I let, people said, no, I don't know why you're doing that. You'll never live long enough to, to use it. But he did. And, and I tell you, I, I ate an awful lot of peaches and apples as far as the kids. That's they were good. <laughs> Dead right, jam. right off the tree. And I don't like peaches since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had plenty of fruit. We had uh, pear trees, apple trees, or, and, uh, plum, trees. plum trees, and cherry trees around here. Right. Raspberries, strawberries. Yeah. My mother used to can 400 cans of red fruit vegetables so you can imagine how busy she was. You can imagine how good they were, too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And she used to go out and husk corn. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, as I would go out there and knock the stack, they would help her on the Saturday. Too. I was home from school. So she was a hard working woman. Put it in the stack and then husk it? Yeah, well, it's so, you know, it would be cut the stack before first. You cut it and stack it. Mm -hmm. You know, even when it's half green yet. And then when it was good and ripe in the fall, then you would throw the, throw the stacks down and husk that corn. Ever yeah. husk it at night? Oh, no, 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 not at night. Of course, we had cows. You had to milk cows. And I. Later on, uh, I used to cart off the South River. Tell them how old you were. Oh, and then I worked in a grocery store. I was a grocery store up here in Road Hall. Russell Kansas and his wife had a grocery store. And when she, said, and she had a baby, and then they wanted me to come up there. And I used to be about 16 years old. 
And I used to run this car around there taking grocery on it. Now, was that store in South Brunswick? Oh, yeah, it was right, right across the way from the cemetery down here. Okay. It's ripped down now. Right and the name right of it was? What was the name of the, the store? Well, at that time it was Kindness, but before that, people the name of Hulk, Charlie Hallfish had run here. Years ago, you don't remember, remember Pete telling us who the name of the people that run that store? It, it no. Was, anyway, when I was young, it was closed up. Mm -hmm. But then in around 19, in the, like, 19, in the early 20s, Hallfish bought this store. And he opened up the grocery store. That's a Plainsboro name, Whole Fish. Yeah, I never yeah, heard that. Right. I, I think there's Whole Fish people in Plainsboro. And uh, he uh, he had a gas pump there later on. He had a, sold golf gasoline, sold everything under the sun. Well, he ran around and took orders too. But then Russell Candace bought him out, and that's when Jack. I worked out a little bit. Russell Candace's wife had a baby. She she couldn't go out and take orders, so mm -hmm. then I. Or what two days a week to have a time to take grocery orders. Mm -hmm. So, but so this, I worked the grocery store for a while too. Well, oh, that's good. But going back in this thing, Pearson's was mad because this farm here, this house, and went out of the Pearson family. They owned it for 200 years. Were they any relation to the Pearsons in Monmouth Junction? Brother. Oh, yeah. Brother. The, the, the Albert Pearson. Albert Pearson. Family. Albert Pearson's family. There was a bunch of those boys. There was Joe and Arthur and Clarence, Pete, and Neil. There's seven of them all together. Well, our township clerk, what was his first name? Albert, Albert Pearson. Albert, Albert, Albert Pearson. Pearson. Yeah. See, he was a brother to the to Neil that owned the farm next door and Joe Pearson up there at the Forest Gate there was right there where exit 8A is now they own the Joe Pearson owned that farm but it was a Harding farm he married to Harding and when they died well he got the farm but they're all dead all of them mm. I don't know whether you want to put this on here but the Pearson lived next door he shot himself you know oh, really? Neil Pearson mm -hmm. my brother went over there he come out. He's going over there, and his sister lived with him. She was hard of hearing. Like how they went over there. And he's got this in through here, top of his head, oh, and, and that chicken was there picking the onions, mm. and he shot his brains out. That was terrible. Mm. And I had to notify his sister. My brother told me to stay there with him until he went. Right how old were you then? Oh, oh God, old no, that one. 1935, that was yes. it. Yeah. You were young to see such a thing. Yeah. First, my father, my father passed away in 1926, and then my brother and I bought this farm. Mm -hmm. And then after he died, we bought that farm in 1935. Mm -hmm. so. And you still drive the tractor? Oh, not too much. I but, can, but I just, I but, got the grandchildren doing that work now, so. That's good. That's good. Keep them working. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. So, that's all. Of course, then, I worked down the Hercules Powder Company already. In the winter time. In the winter, see, when things were slacker. When I was only a kid. I had to take care of everything here myself. Brother Fritz was on the jury. <laughs> yeah. You do work. So I was the boss. So that was, of course, 1930, we got fine. So, yeah, the three of us lived here by ourselves, see? I see. So I left. And he got married and I left. And I went down to Dean. I was there and then he got almost married. 60 years there. Did, did you buy another farm down there? Or? Never owned it. Lived there for almost 60 years and never owned it. It was a shoe estate. Oh, okay. And as long as, uh, long as it Mrs. Shue, uh, uh, John Shue's mother was alive, the children wouldn't sell it because everything went to her and they figured that she would give it all to the church so they wouldn't sell anything until, until she died. And by that time it was worth a couple thousand dollars an acre. Well, the woods and swamp and the whole thing was about 400 acres. So mm. I never had a chance to buy it. Is it somebody buy it now? Speculators, speculators. You know, the house is falling down. Oh, the house is ripped apart. The blinds mm -hmm. fell down. I had a place where I could move to, so I got off 
for there. I got, well, it got in bad shape. I wasn't using me fixing. I didn't know it. The roof leaked and everything else, and I, I had a pass down the road that I fixed up a little and moved down there. That seems the fate of a lot of um, old farm homes. Either the state acquires them and lets them deteriorate, or the developer. Yeah. And that's what's happened uh, to many of the big old nice farms. Yep. So, uh, but a fellow moved in there. See, DKM owned it for years, and uh, and a fellow worked for them. He moved in there. Well, he put a he put a roof on the house and fixed it up a little bit. But he <laughs> finally moved away and went to uh, to Connecticut. But somebody else, DKM, they couldn't do anything with it, so they turned it back to the bank. Now, the bank up in North Jersey owns it. And of course, they decided that they were going to rip all the buildings down and clear it all up and, and all this stuff. So, uh, but they haven't done anything. They dug up a tanks, a fuel tank and a gas tank and things like that. But, the, you know, other than that, they haven't ripped anything down. Now, Mr. Kuhn, you have a lovely, a lovely home here. Well, you were starting to tell me what it was like when, when you were you first remember. Well, this was closed here, and that was a hallway there. It was a stairway. Mm -hmm. And, of course, now uh, my wife got sick three years ago. She wanted us to live up and down stairs, so then we put a little bathroom in there. Mm -hmm. And th this was all closed off here, and there was a doorway in here. Okay. And as I say, down the kitchen was down, eating with the... It was two steps crap. down. We had to go into the kitchen. And two... Yeah. We had to make two stairs up to the dining room and into the pantry. And that was a lot of hard work, too. Sure of course, was. then later on, we changed that. <laughs> I remember we got very rid well. of the pantry and put this. The, the, the watch it on wasn't there when we moved here all the time. The cabinets. <laughs> in the kitchen. And then we had put them cabinets in the kitchen. And no, we had a nice, there was a door back over there, and there was a grape barber. That, I still remember that when I was a little girl. There was a beautiful grape barber back there, and that you could go out the back of the kitchen. The and, door. And the door, right, and there was, a, you know, a brick walkway, and then this big old grape barber that went over, and it was really pretty, and it was yeah. really you nice. You know, that reminds me of what I used to do when I come home from school. I'd go out of the window upstairs, snake. I'd climb out on that grape barber and eat grapes. Because <laughs> 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 one was in the fall through. The purple yeah, kind? Part the purple, purple ones? Yes, yeah. purple ones. With the right. pits? Well, yes, with good the pits. Jelly. Right, good yes, jelly. That's right, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, yeah. we talk about the, about the windmill. See, then and I can remember when oh, the windmill. Oh, we had a windmill in here, too. See, that's... That was right. We in, had a big old windmill. Uh, put a bathroom up there and a windmill and water down to the barn and... And they had hot water to go into the kitchen stove that had a thing in there that the water circulated. Water bag in the stove. Yeah, hmm. water bag in a, in a wood stove or coal, whatever you wanted to burn in it. Of course, in the summertime, you didn't use that much. You didn't have much hot water. You had to heat it. With it. And that was before most people had running water in their houses, you right? Can say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. that again. Have a bathroom in 1916. Right. Yeah. We had bathrooms, but we didn't have any electricity, though, until after World War II. Oh, I right. remember that very well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, that's right. there. we had the hot, had to we, take a bath and have that right. hot Right, we did have hot that, water, that but... Uh, thing. Well, then, then, of course, you put a pipeless heater in, which was right here, you know, mm -hmm. to heat the whole house. In the winter, when the heater worked, but in the summer... Right. You had to heat your water up, too. Well, that was a kitchen thing. You know, <laughs> and that your fireplace? No, fireplace. No. No, we, that was never used. It wasn't used. There was a, there was a there. fireplace there, we never used it. Because mm -hmm. when we were going to get this room, we put that in the Artificial uh, one in know, there. But it was the right old brick. And then it went, the chimney fell down once, too. It had a, was a new chimney in there. Mm -hmm. So you know how old it was. Mm. Well, I'll bet you there's houses. Well over two, oh, you know it's well over 200 years old. It was in the Pearson family for 200 years and before my, my fa far our father bought it, so. It's close to 300 years then. Well, no, and I'm not, well now the barn with Pete Pearson told me <clears> the barn stood out here and then, of course that chestnut tree out there has been the same size ever since he was born or I was born. <laughs> 
1970, it was a bitter cold winter, and we froze all the pipes up in the house. So the next year, my father put his pipe with cedar in. Because cedar was no... Now, did he put hole. that in? Pardon? Did he put that in? Oh, oh yeah, my father. Well, cook. Harm may cook. Oh, Dutch neck, they, 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 they put all those windmills, windmills around here. <laughs> I guess they're out of business. They don't operate Oh, more. yeah, they're no more. They were for a long time, though. Armay Cook and son. Yeah, they used to come here and to work, work for them. Now, did um, during World War II, did you farm like potatoes for the uh -oh. for the government and that type of thing? Oh yeah, yeah, we raised potatoes. And, well, sometimes you had allotment, yeah. So how long did you keep your orchards? Oh uh, well, it <laughs> played out maybe 10, 15. Once. A tree would die here, and a tree would die there. Or sometimes it had a, a certain, I had a, had an awful windstorm. I wouldn't know, couldn't call it a hurricane or tornado, mm -hmm. but it blowed a lot of them trees over. Finally, they, is that really the life of an orchard? About uh, a tree, orchard tree, about 15 years. Well, you see, he planted a peach tree and an apple tree. Peach trees don't live very long, so the peach trees died out as the apple trees got bigger. But peach trees have been gone a long time. Yeah, but the apple trees, no, they lasted them. a good amount of years. There, there's a, a few, but most of them are gone. But we lost a lot of the trees, though, because I still remember it was the year that I start going with Walt, so it had to be like 1949, maybe 1950, because Carol made her first Holy Communion, and we had had a very bad storm, and a lot of the apple trees were uprooted, and I yeah. took a picture of Walt, and Carol with her veil and everything, and down by the apple tree, all in bloom, because even though they had been uprooted and knocked over, they all bloomed that year. So so, so that's when we really lost a lot of the trees, though, because I can still see all those trees laying down, mm -hmm. down there. So you that had to be like in times, ones would go. But, so but we still had, you know, we had enough apples. Mother was always making apple pies and that. Oh, yeah. Apple sauce. And go back to World War One. I. I remember... Uh, 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 November 11th, 1918, the teacher, she got word that the armistice was signed, the war was over, and she let us all go home and rang the bell, and boy, had a great time. That's uh, right. Talk about the, the school that you went to, mm -hmm. the one-room schoolhouse down oh, yeah. here. My goodness. Now, yeah, where was it located? <laughs> go down here to the corner, make the right, and uh, just, let's see. Sec, just the third house. Mm -hmm. There was a acre lot there, and that was where the school was. Mm -hmm. It was between Clayton's place and Brown's. One Park. room school. The one room school, eight eighth grades. It was the last building on that side before you get to the corner there. Of course. And the teacher used to she'd get a letter for her husband was in the war, and she'd get that letter and she'd cry there. And what was her name? Thompson. That was her marriage name. What was her? You remember? My, it's funny. It is my my si oldest sister, when they lived up near Forest Gate, she went. Her people lived there too. And my oldest sister went to school with her. Uh -huh. Oh, well, that was her married name, but I don't know why. I never heard her maiden name. Oh, I did. Well, she was married then anyway. Her husband was in the army. I know, but Emma was telling me. Emma knew. Emma went to school with her. And did Emma go to school there too? No. Who? Your sister no. go to school there? Yes, Emma, she was. Emma. Road Hall, she didn't go to Road Hall. No, no, I mean up by, no, no, I mean up in Gravel Hill, Hill or something. She was much older than okay. She was the oldest, you know, oldest one in the family. Mm -hmm. So you had one sister? No, I had three. Three. Mm -hmm. But Emma was the oldest sister. But then she, she had a brother, George and Emma. Nine and their mother died. Their mother died. And then my grandfather remarried. 
and then Daddy and Uncle Frank and Aunt Mary and Aunt Lil, Uncle Ferd are from that mother. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> my old sister was married when I was a month old. Uh, I remember him when she was married right here. The minister married right here. <laughs> I can remember that, yeah. Yeah, he was on a little baby plane in the crib out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nineteen twelve. So you used to take did you grade your potatoes? Or did you take them to mounds or who was who Well was first off we used to cart them in. We would cart them up to Dayton or not to Janesburg or Chamber Barkley in Janesburg. Remember who's up to date in there? Delatash? Yeah, oh, so yes, but yeah, that's right. most of them went to Benton and Clayton, though, yeah. later. Yeah, later it was Benton and Clayton, but... That was in Mama's Junction. But then we started grading our own, and we'd load the cars. We still sell to the dealer, uh -huh. to the dealers, but we had a grader, and uh, we around uh, 100 acres of potatoes later on. We'd farm different farms over on the... Fresh Pond Road there. Mm -hmm. I would say Fresh Pond, because that's what it was called in those mm -hmm. days. The days of the Road. Mm -hmm. It was a, a uh, McDowell farm with farm over farm back until he died. Now, you mentioned the Van Dyke farm. Didn't I, did I hear you say Van Dyke? Yes. Now, where was that? It was three Van Dyke farms. They were over on the Fresh Pond Road. Howard Van Dyke, Wardrar Farm, John Van Dyke, and the Wilden Dyke Farm was on the other side of the Davison Willow Road. That's what we heard the other day. The name Van Dyke settled mm -hmm. also in um, in the Kingston area. 